It rests on the banks of the mighty Mississippi in the city of St. Cloud, just 70 miles northwest of Minneapolis. But from the central Minnesota community, you can see every inch of the globe in the faces of 16,000 students, in study abroad programs held in 20 nations, in the cultures of 80 countries represented by students and faculty. It is an international campus large enough to bring you the world, yet small enough for you to recognize your place in it. As a leader in higher education in central Minnesota, St. Cloud State University programs have been recognized by nearly every major accrediting board affiliated with our 175 academic programs. It is a 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio, one on one attention and hands on learning. It is about asking new questions and asking more of yourself. It is finding out who you are, what you want and how far you can go. 92% of our graduates are employed in their field of study within a year of graduation. 15% of them go on to graduate schools like Stanford, Mayo Medical, and Princeton. And 100% of them make a difference. Because they understand the world around them, they've met its challenges face to face, and they know how to apply what they've learned. Most importantly, they know they'll never stop learning. Welcome back to the show. I hope you're ready for our last story today. Although many of you may be familiar with the National Hockey Center and the Huskies who play there, you may not be aware of the steps that it takes to organize the games that take place. SCSU Local once again went behind the scenes to give you those answers. Let's head there now. Oh, who else will agree that Trivia Week and Waldo's Pizza was like a... I am the director of the National Hockey Center, so I spend a lot of time not just on men's games, but organizing all the other games that we have in the building. Typical game day for me starts out like, you know, before lunch I'll start getting ready for stuff and, and then later in the afternoon around four o'clock is when things really start to roll. I, I gotta make sure that we have the temperatures right in the building, that our ice is good, and I consult with our Zamboni guys about that and uh, go around and, and talk with uh, the sound people and the lighting, make sure that the lights are all up and running good for the robo lights for the uh, light show as well as our music is working good and our spotlights are all tested and ready to rock. Our student staff basically, uh, we have a meeting with them at, before the game and we uh, go over all the responsibilities. We go over as far as how big the crowd is going to be, uh, what things we can look for. Uh, they're trained to look for people that are drinking, people that might need assistance, and they report them to Eric or myself and uh, we together with public safety and St. Cloud Police deal with situations. We have two event supervisors and then 18 game staff on game days. Um, two of our uh, event supervisors are making sure that everyone's in the right spots and then we have a pass gate person who shows up at 4 o'clock to check the pass gate area. They will be uh, checking in all media and player personnel and that will be coming in through the back door. Then we also have a lower level corridor person that is uh, managing the hallway of the visiting team locker room to make sure no one's going back into the player team locker rooms. We also have five net movers slash maintenance uh, personnel that will work down on the ice level to make sure the nets are being placed on the ice properly. And then they're also helping the uh, building staff with uh, shoveling around the outside of the building. What we try to accomplish with our ushers is that we really don't want people moving around in the seating areas when the puck is moving because that interferes with people trying to watch the game. So what we'd like people to get educated on is hey, if the game is going on, I'm going to stay in my seat, and if, the, if I come back from the concessions, uh, I'm going to stop at the edge and we'll wait for a whistle. That's what we try to teach people, and hopefully it's working. I've worked at the National Hockey Center here since before we opened the building. Uh, that was 21 plus years ago, um, and it, I'm honored to be able to work here. We just have a, we have a blast come game night. Yeah, we work hard. We're, we're tired at the end of the game, but when the doors open and the students come rushing in and they get to their chairs and everybody's talking about how much fun it's going to be and it's just it's very exciting. Our ushers are here um, to help people 
uh, with whatever they need. And uh, Eric and I, we run around all night and we talk to them and we play a little game with them and say, well, you know, we're Section 201 and we make them cover their eyes. And if they don't get it, they owe us a Pepsi. And if they get it, then I get them a Pepsi. I guess that's how it works. Except for I get, give them expired pop, so they don't know that. <laughs> Wow, I have to say, I had no idea how much work went into the setup for the games. Neither did I, and it makes me appreciate the games that much more. You can check out the SCSB website for more information on events and changes that will be coming to the NHC in the near future. And I bet SCSB Local will be there to cover those changes, but until then, you can tune in next week for all news stories about the people, places, and events of Central Minnesota. This has been SCSB Local. I'm Josh Ackerman. And I'm Danielle Latour, reminding you to keep it local. Today I'm going to talk about Patty. Patty's best characteristics, she's stupid. Stupid and ugly. Everything she does is ugly. Watch her eat. Watch her stuff her face. Look at her. Greasy hair, dirty fingernails. It makes me want to vomit. Get a life, Patty. Thank you. Great day, isn't it? Yeah. Too bad your boat's gonna sink at 11.05. Don't come closer. I have rabies. Don't you wish there were warnings to protect you from life's risks? With diabetes, there is one. It's called A1C, a simple blood test that helps measure your risk of serious complications. Learn more at diabetesa1c.org. My name's Brandon. In nine years, I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, Brandon. I'll start drinking with the older kids. And whatever they do, I'll do. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. I know I'll start with alcohol. I'm just not sure how it's going to end. You can let your imagination run wild. There are amazing possibilities when you open your mind to reading.